welcome, welcome to Coffee with the Port St. Lucie Mayor. I'm Teresa Aronson from the St. Lucie County Chamber of Commerce. We're so excited. This is my first time back. Oh, look, I just got a glimpse of my hair. This is my first time back <laughs> in um, City Hall since uh, I think February. It's exciting to be back. We're social distancing. You, you'll see there's a different look to the show. But uh, thank you for joining us, hopefully on Facebook Live. I'm joined by, of course, the mayor of this beautiful city in his spot. I'm not going to welcome you to your not only your city hall, but your exact spot. Oh, please do. We don't want to uh, break tradition. I know. <laughs> Councilwoman, I, I mean, yeah. Carissa, nice to see you also. We have uh, two real live guests out there, too. So two real live yeah, guests. Yes, what we else? are. We're making our way back slowly but surely. And I'm sure we'll talk a little bit about that today, making our way back and the implications of all that. I really do want to dive into it. I've been able to I have been out. Um, a bit, you know, social distancing. I haven't really been to a lot of places, but um, I have talked to a lot of people. And so we'll, we'll talk about that. We'll get into that, I think, maybe today. Do you have other stuff you want to force? No, that's really my, my one main thing that, is, I, that I'd like to share with the, with you and your, your audience and the people of Port St. Lucie. Okay. You know, this idea that uh, we're so tired Ugh. of it. Yes. And uh, I'm sure in our head we're like over it, but it's not over. And it's not going to be over until we see that uh, vaccine mm -hmm. come to be. So I know that things like masks have become partisan and, you know, it's been it's symbolic of whether you believe in freedom or you believe in, you know. I know it is. But let me tell you that I've read some great research uh, the last couple of days over what a difference mathematically a mask can make, even if it's only 50 percent effective. So would you rather have masks when you go into a crowded place? Or would you rather have three, four, or 5,000 infections a day and, and be subjected to something more severe? So I, it's, isn't it easier just to I wear know. a mask? I think you and I are going to be speaking the same language on this one. I think we feel very similarly. And, um, but I, it's important to discuss it more because I was just saying as I came in here today, I've ran into too many people that want to make this a partisan issue. And I see it as a safety issue. And I'm... I'm, I'm insulted by the the abundance of partisan play here i don't think it's necessary and so right and you are very uh let me say fiscally conservative and principle i am fiscally conservative this yes. and that's fair to say yeah. i'm very fiscally conservative and i think that's probably the only place i'm conservative um in principle but yeah this partisan play is is ridiculous and i feel that the the people that are allowing themselves to be influenced by it are really diminishing their own power. And that's sad well, too. that's deep. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and uh, you don't have to wear this in your car or any of that, that's not where, but when you go into Publix or you go into a restaurant mm -hmm. or you decide that you wanna get together with 50 of your friends, that's a really good time to, to wear one of these. Yeah. And please do, because it beats the alternative. It does, it does. But yeah, we're gonna be speaking the same language, I'm sure today, which is good. I always like it when we're on the same side. Well, it makes for a less tense meeting. It does. It makes for better viewing. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe not. not. Yeah, jinx. <laughs> Actually, so um, we're going to jump right into visiting with our sponsor. Our poor sponsor's like, oh, it's going to be a hot show today. <laughs> and, and they're going to be with us, too. So please welcome, of course, our partner last year, our partner this year, Mid-Florida Credit Union. I know we have um, Sherita Walker, Maylin Johnson. Thank you both for being with us today. Joseph's. Joseph, I said Johnson. Joseph. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I apologize for that, Maylin. I know better. Welcome, guys. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. So we're, um, we've already hopped right into it, the mayor and I, but I just want to mention that you guys are open. How are things working? What's your COVID plan for operations out there at Mid Florida's? Well, we're, we're open and um, readily available for all our members. Um, sanitization all over the place, mask by all means, and you know we are a financial institution, so um, we want to protect our members as long as ourselves. So um, when you come in, prepare to be sanitized, in other words. <laughs> good, good. But, um, yes. Good. And Mid Florida, tell us all your location sites. And your, so previously you were open sort of by appointment only, but now you have regular hours, correct? Correct. Yes. Now we are open um, regular hours. Our lobby is from nine to five, Monday through Thursday. 
Friday, we're open a little bit later, 9 to um, 6 o'clock. And of course, our drive through is 7 to 7, Monday through Friday. So we're available for the members' needs when they need us. Um, we're, we're here. We're, um, even when uh, we were closed through the lobby, our drive through was still open for our members. Yeah, I remember that. And, uh, and as you know, we do have the three locations in the area, um, US 1, Port St. Lucie, and then we have um, on St. Lucie West, corner of Cashmere and St. Lucie West, and then we have Gatlin Boulevard. Very good. Now, we know we have our event center over on US 1, the Mid-Florida uh, Event Mid -Center. center. So you, you can go Mid-Florida Credit Union Event Center. It's so long. That's to begin with. And then after you establish <laughs> that as the name, you can say then you can go Mid-Florida Event Center. I'm going straight to Madonna yes. with this No, you got to do it first. I, I, otherwise, you're in violation of the contract. And we will have to uh, remove... Oh. Okay. The contribution that we give to the chamber as a penalty. Okay. Well, just uh, shove that credit union part in here. So I'll say Mid Florida, and there'll be a little edit yeah, from all the credit, credit union <laughs> event center. So please feel free to edit me with any voice you so choose. Hopefully, oh, a male robotic voice would be my favorite. I would love that. I apologize. So, no, I know. You're good. It's very serious because I got the same lecture from Sarah Prohaska. Okay. Oh. Yes. Yes. No, Mayor, you can't do it that way. I was like, what? Yeah, I know. I know, Sharita and Malin, they're not lecturing you. But oh, I no, can they see totally that Sarah, would. They totally would. No, I can see that Sarah would put the hammer down on that one. I apologize. Mid Florida Credit Union. Did I ever tell you about the comment <laughs> that she late at night and her husband answered and was like, who's this calling? Oh, really? I yeah. love that. You it's called her late? Classic. It's a classic. Oh, geez. Story. Yeah, I like to tell it. Um, my, you know, my husband doesn't love it when people call late at night and he doesn't care who calls me. It's just that, you know, at a certain time he feels like it's over for you today. Oh, I, I would. If the situation was reversed, oh, I'd be right there. So I, I consider him a good friend now. Oh, good, 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 good. He's nice. He's very nice. Do you mind that we're just sort of sidebarring on your uh, husband? Hey, and, and it's Friday. So, yeah, there you go. Very good. Well, thank you, guys. Um, is there anything else you want to tell us? What's going on at Credit Union? Do you have any specials going on? Interest rates are at an all-time low, so if you have something decent, now's yes, the time to mention yes. it. When it comes to auto refinance or purchasing rates, uh, we're looking at 2.69 lowest right now. So very, very good in the rating area. Um, so for anyone out there who's looking to uh, purchase or refinance, um, come visit one of our locations, and um, our bakers will surely assist you with that. We love it. We love it. Anything you need to add, Shreda, before we uh, dive right into to what's on our minds, which I think there's a lot on my I really do have a lot on my mind today, so I don't know how long you budgeted for the show. <laughs> uh, we could really, no, we could like really have a hot take here. I don't know if it'll run afoul of uh, mid-Florida policy, but, you know, if we want to talk about any of the issues uh, facing our society today, I'd, I'd love to hear from from our friends at, at Mid Florida and, and Shrita's, you know, I talk to her all the time about yeah, any of the things happening as a result of the the killing of George Floyd and what it means for the country and, and for our community specifically. I'd love to listen if if they want to share any thoughts. I will um, actually give them the platform if they want to, and I'll actually actually give them an out if they don't want to yeah, <laughs> accordingly. Of we should always do that yeah. for our guests. Yeah, definitely we want to do that for our sponsors. I do not want to put them on the spot yeah. for having to speak out on whatever's going on in the country right now. And I always speak on behalf of my members, as you know. So I have to tread lightly, too. I, I do. But I think there's also a time when you can't be quiet about certain things. So we'll see how that goes today. We'll just see what happens and look at look back in hindsight. So, all right, Shrita, Maylin, anything you want to add before we head out? Oh, no, just to piggyback on what uh, Maylin was referring to in reference to our auto rates, refinance and purchase, we do have um, specials, 36 months, up to 36 months, uh, 1.99 interest rate, um, depending on your credit, and also 90 days, no payment. So those are a couple of things we're highlighting right now. Home equities, we're still loaning on those as well. No closing costs. So we have to have money at the end of the 90 days, though, right? 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, I'm, I'm out. that sounded good for me until the end there. But. Yeah, you definitely have to eventually start paying. It's not, um, it is not a PPP limp. It's not a gift. Or a grant. No, it no. doesn't convert to a grant at the end. It does no. not. So very good. All right. Well, thank you to both of you. And a huge thanks to Mid Florida Credit Union. You guys have been such great partners over the years. And we've gotten to know so many of you. And I and I am I love my Mid Florida friends. And they know that because I not only just say that, but I've got the home equity loan and the savings and all that kind of great stuff with them. Yeah, they're great. Yeah. And they're an active part of the community. And ever since they've joined us, they've just been at everything and they're participating at every level mm -hmm. of our in our community. And I think it's exceptional. And I appreciate uh, Shrita allowing me to have some fun and always being a good partner. Yeah, she's got a great sense of humor. She does. We it, love you guys. Is that, uh, Shrita, is that art in your house or is that at the bank? We're, 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 no. The, <laughs> it's at home. It's at home? All right, that's nice. That's very strategically located. And uh, I don't very, usually talk to Council on Morgan. She is the master of the backdrop. She's very good at yeah, it. Yeah, she figured it out. She She did all kinds of tours. I know they rate you on that. I've tried, but I'm such a minimalist. Like, it's just me, a wall, and, like, I try to put up one little tchotchke. I'm not good at that. But, yes, your artwork is lovely. Maylin has the distinctive sight of uh, commercial retail tile above her head. Yes, yes. So, we're, yeah. we're counting the number of tiles to see how big the office so is. So I know so. she's at the office. Yes. <laughs> Well, thanks, guys. Have a great day. Thank you for being with us. Remind everybody, Mid-Florida Credit Union, several locations here. And if you live, work, or worship in our area, you too can be a part of the Mid-Florida Credit Union family. All right. Absolutely. Thanks, Thank guys. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much for your support. Thank you. <laughs> and for those of you watching at home, I'm doing this to this, you know, to the desk because that's where I see them. And I just realized how stupid that must look. <laughs> but yeah, I'm waving goodbye to the desk. All right, very good. <laughs> Moving on. Get a wave back. That's <laughs> the know, question. That, that, if I said it did. <laughs> um, okay, so here we go. We're going to dive into it. We we mentioned it at the front of the show. Um, I've seen a lack of masks, and I've seen a lot of theory on mask and very little of it scientific, you know, um, and that's what scares me. That people are really just allowing themselves to be, I think, in some cases, lemmings for a belief system that doesn't belong in the fight to mask or the argument to mask or not to mask. Wow, you're going you're gonna to make a stronger statement than, than I am, and I would always encourage people to Along the same lines, though, I always encourage people to find the research. There is some research that's becoming available. Mm -hmm. It's in some of the outlets today, including the Tampa Bay Times. And there's a couple different studies. And both studies were indicative of mass working, even when they're only 50% effective. Remember, if we all had N95 masks, yeah. we'd be rocking it, because that keeps out 95% of the particulate matter in the air. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones that uh, our healthcare providers utilize. And they're very obviously highly effective. But even if they're only 50% effective. It's better than zero. It shows, the math shows and these studies show that it interrupts the spread. And that if we would just all adopt a 50% effective mask, we wouldn't need any of the hardcore safer at home or any of the other uh, stipulations, restrictions, requirements, yeah, yeah, restrictions, perfect. Yeah, I don't want to backslide into restric restrictions. So I, I, I don't want to advocate stay at home. I want to get back to work, and I think we need to get back to work. But I think that we can do it safely. There was a new story today about a hair salon, um, one of my favorites, great clips, you know, National Salon, that had two workers that tested positive. They ex they had 140 clients between the two of them, and so far none of those clients have tested positive. And they had a very strict mask and um, sanitizer policy in place at the time that these uh, workers were exposing their clientele. So other studies non-mask would indicate it, uh, uh, several, a larger percentage of those clients would have been um, inflicted. They would have been testing COVID positive. So I think that if you don't want to read something out of scientific journal about the efficacy of masks, you know, there are short clips on online and on news outlets and even on Facebook that can 
show you the effectiveness. But of course, with that, you also get the other side. And that's how our country works. You should be able to get both sides, right? You should. And I guess one of my issues with Facebook and social media is how many times does it actually change your mind? So we're having this discussion in, in my ho household because my wife has become very active on Facebook. Okay. And in many ways, she's uh, had an awakening to certain issues she's very passionate about. And she's frustrated by what she's seeing, especially among uh, her friends and people that she's known for years. And she never knew that they felt a certain way. And that can be very hard to deal with and accept. It, it is. But I'm not sure that, you know, if we, you and I were going back on Facebook, I'm not sure there's anything I could say that would actually change your mind. And, and maybe not you. Maybe you would be the exception to that or I would be the exception. But for a lot of people, I think it's just an opportunity to, to dig in further, to hear what you want to hear, and just mm -hmm. to kind of vent versus really listening, empathizing, analyzing, learning, getting better. I agree with you. I would never advocate Facebook as your um, educational tool or your your sole source of news gathering. Um, and you know I'm not a huge Facebook uh, participant. But I do see, and, and it's funny, I had this conversation with a good friend of mine the other day that said he went on Facebook and he learned a lot about somebody that he considered a friend and was shocked at what he learned. And, and that's the chance you take when you engage in Facebook. But I do want to say that I have all kinds of friends from all over, you know, with, uh, with a million different beliefs. Some of them are, are ingenious. Some of them are cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. I won't name any names. But I enjoy all of them for different reasons. And I think that we all coexist very nicely. But I don't want their, their beliefs to infiltrate what... I want to believe. I want to, to look at both sides. I want to look at, I do like science. I want to hear some, you know, I want to learn about particulate matter, but I do want to make my own decision and it is not aligned with any particular group. And that's what I would say is important for people to remember. I, I don't know. I don't like a group think. How do you feel about a group think? I'm, I'm a believer in the scientific method and kind of structural problem solving and yeah. You know, you, you listen, empathize and learn on the front side. And obviously, I, I've only been mayor since uh, 2014, but I've been in public service since 1996 now. And uh, yeah, after and over that whole time, I've been dealing and in, in had the honor and privilege to work with the, the public. And you do a lot of constituent cases. And I've done it my whole career. And you find that there's at least three sides to every story. Always. You know, on the simple ones, maybe there's 80 percent, you know, like we could agree that this is the same, you know, we're in the same family of colors and we can get we can you know, we got very strong correlation there where we're like, yeah, we're, we're together on that. But on the complicated issues, especially if you get into a 50 50 or even a 60 40. Yeah. Then there's all kinds of viewpoints. And at a very minimum, there's your opinion, my opinion, and then the truth. Mm -hmm. So you're always looking at three. And we owe it to each other to try to see it from as many sides as possible. And then uh, if we could uh, agree on some of the same facts and talk about how we approach things, what our values and principles are, then we can get to finding common ground. Because shared interest is where it's at, right? Wh wherever there's overlapping interest, even self-interest, I know some people think that's bad, self-interest is terrible. Let me tell you that Mother Teresa acted in self-interest. She just, her interest was helping other people. That's like what made her fulfilled and, and, you know, got her going. That's what kept her stoked is helping other people. That's what made her feel good about her life. Yes. And yeah, um, so there's nothing wrong with that. Yes. And yes. so where our interests overlap, that's where the magic happens. Yeah. And so if I say that you're terrible and, you know, you're a terrible person and I hate you and, and you do the same, we're, we're saying that we don't want to work together and find that overlap. You know, we're foreclosing the opportunity to find it. So, yeah, I'm very fact oriented. And, and when people say they don't like science or, you know, 99 percent of scientists are wrong. I'm like, but you're talking on your smartphone. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you think went into manufacturing this phone? You know, the same principles, the same problem solving, you know, that that you're discounting on this opinion went into. 
science, yeah. Yeah, creating this. This is, this is science. So I'm a big believer in the scientific method. And unfortunately, you know, our behaviors and our feelings sometimes, you know, they, they sometimes conflict with that. We don't want to accept it. It takes time for us to accept things uh, as we move forward. And originally, the, ma the uh, language on face coverings and masks wasn't good. No, it wasn't. And, and, but you have to study why that was. Well, in the beginning, we didn't have enough masks <laughs> for the people so that work in the hospitals. So you're trying to keep, minimize. Yeah, you're trying to keep the, the rush. Because yeah. we can see what happens when there's a rush on a certain good. I, toilet paper, all right? Yes. Yeah, so I think that they were keeping this very simple message because they didn't want there to be a rush. They didn't want to take them out of the hands of the hospitals because that was the first order of business is, hey, you got to get it. You got to get this personal protection and protective equipment to the hospitals. And then hey, it would be nice to get them to the first responders after that. I mean, we, we still haven't caught up with that. But I mean, come on, there's a reason why other cultures have been using masks for, pan, you know, for contagions and, and uh, things that could turn into a pandemic for years. Yes. They, I think it's, there is some effectiveness, I would hate to. Science is, I think, undeniable for most. I mean, science exists because how else would we have, be able to move forward with technology? That is science. Now, and I also think that it's great that people have different beliefs, and I want to I wanna be respectful of those beliefs because it's fine if, you, if that is truly what you believe um, and, and that's where you want to live. That's great, too. But I would say that I, I ask them to then just be courteous. Um, I've had a couple of instances, and this is, might be why I'm fired up about it. It could be. You are. I mean, this is. A, I know this, this is, is probably very, the very most that up. I have emoted, I think, probably on the show. But I understand where some people live on this issue, and, I, and I, I'm okay with that. That's fine. You can live there. But when you come at me with a hug, when I'm clearly masked up because you're insisting that it doesn't exist, I find that disrespectful of me. Sure. And, and so it's okay for you to, to feel that way, um, go right ahead, but don't charge me because you're sure yes. <laughs> this is not a thing. And I would just ask you to please respect other people's beliefs and err on the side of caution. But then I would like to go further and say, if you think that this is just nonsense, that's great, that's your belief, but could you participate in um, societal courtesy? Would it kill you? Would it kill you or is it more important to make a statement of your belief systems or is it more important to be courteous to your fellow man? I think that's really the decision you're asked to make. Well, hey, the golden rule always works. So I always say the world be a better place uh, the more we follow the golden rule. And, and that's all that is. And yeah. for as much as we believe in freedom and personal freedom, you know, the right to throw my fist ends where your nose begins. Mm -hmm. And so they have a right to believe what they want to believe, provided it doesn't hurt you. Yeah, absolutely. And I don't want to try to talk them off that belief either that's not my place my i'm just saying we need to get back to work we need to continue the reopening process there's nobody i think that doesn't feel that way and in order to do that safely we have to take safety measures and so i'm encouraging all of our businesses and, and you i'm sure know this but we want to make sure those supplies are available to our businesses we have masks we have sanitizer we're selling them on our website we're not making really any money off of this we need to provide this service to our members to our community so that they can open safely so we're making sure they have easy access to all the things they need to conduct their business on a daily basis because the, the alternative is a backslide into restrictions nobody wants to go there well and speaking of masks in partnership with in partnership with the US Conference of Mayors and Bella Canvas, I would like to gift the chamber, oh I don't know if Oh wow. Maybe uh, five hundred or so masks. Very nice. Okay, I don't have my mask on, so I won't talk. Thank you. And I will, in turn, make these available to our members for free. Um, Excellent. Yes. So those, uh, Bella Canvas is a t-shirt manufacturing company, and uh, I guess it would be fair to say textiles and clothing 
And so those are fabric, much like a, like a cotton mm -hmm. t-shirt. And they have two different sizes for fitting all that fit right over the ears, like the ears fold through and then boom. And those are disposable. Oh, they are disposable? They okay. can be, technically they can be washed. Okay. But they're really made to, to be like one per day. Kind okay, of thing. perfect. I'm going to send an email blast out that says my mom, and we only have 500. I want to say that because last time I sent an email that said we had some free masks, we got inundated and we didn't have 10 million masks, unfortunately. So we have 500 masks, a gift from the mayor through the Council and, of Mayors. And, yes, the U.S. Conference of Mayors and Bella Canvas. And I'm going to make sure that they get to businesses. When we did do that, we had the te we gave them free masks. We tried to do those with retail outlets um, first, so that they could reopen safely. We have them available. We have cloth available as well, and that's with the local manufacturer. So we're excited about that. Oh, that's great. I know. I, you know, we weren't able to offer the best price. I'll just be honest on the cloth masks. Uh, our, our disposable masks, I think, are very, very uh, competitive. They're less than a dollar with tax each on our website. But our cloth masks, are you might be able to get them somewhere cheaper, but I'm encouraging you to still try to pay the extra dollar to get them through us because it is a local manufacturer. So all that money stays here in the community. So they can go right online, stlucychamber.org, and order that. And then we've got um, a commercial sanitizers available as well on um, our website. So I have a lot of money wrapped up in this and we don't have much money, but I just am, I'm fearful and I want to be able to provide this service at least through December. And so that's why I bought so much on the front end because I didn't want to buy a couple thousand and, you know, be able to do it for a week. We actually sold 6,000 masks in the first three weeks we were selling them. We sold 6,000 masks. So people are utilizing it. And we've got manufacturers, doctors. One of our local doctors uh, uses this completely for their sanitizer and um, disposable mask supplies. So it's our, our, we have gotten a lot of great feedback on being able to offer that because there are times when masks were hard to get. Um, they're gotten easier. But these are here. We actually do one-day delivery. If you call me during the week and say you need them, I'll bring them out to you. That's, so. that's great. It's a great service. And to your point, it's not going away anytime soon. Mm -hmm. We've been talking about masks, but the real issue is the, the spread of the disease, right? And right now, because we're in phase two of the, the governor's uh, safe, smart, step-by-step -step, uh, plan for Florida's recovery, we're opening back up society. We're sliding up the dimmer switch. Are we seeing an increase in infections? Well, we are seeing numbers that we that actually uh, the numbers we had yesterday were higher than the previous peak. Yeah. And so the argument is again because there's different sides to every issue. Uh, on one side, you have people saying, "See, told you you shouldn't opened up so fast, so soon. Yes. You know, so much." And then on the other, you have, "Well, we're doing triple the testing." And that's why we have, we're having this number of infections. Well, the truth is revealing itself every day. And we get to see, well, it's more likely that this is right or that this is right. And unfortunately, right now, we're seeing uh, the number of cases increase, which could be a, a result of testing. We could have always had that many people get infected. We just didn't know it. But the percentage of, positive. of positives is mm -hmm. also increasing. Yeah. So will it be a modest increase, a tolerable increase to a majority of people, or will it become exponential and it you know, goes from five to ten? You know, that's what you have to worry about. So that's really what we have to be watching is the total numbers, the percent positive. Percent. But then the gold standard that we should all really be focused on is the hospitalizations. Because it's you know, especially as we get better at treating the symptoms and recognizing and testing, the thing is the people who are really sick in a danger of passing away from dying from, from COVID. So hospitalizations, at the end of the day, that's the gold standard. Keep your eye on that. The only problem with that is it's a lagging indicator. What do I mean by that? I mean that when you, when you get this thing, it takes you a few days to show symptoms, right? If Up you're going to get weeks. really sick. Yeah. And then... You're not going to probably have to be hospitalized on the first day. That's after you've been fighting it for a while and your body's losing. That's when you get hospitalized. So the reality is, if I get hospitalized today, 
I might have gotten it two weeks ago, and that's when mm -hmm. we were at coffee with the mayor together. And luckily, we didn't spread it to them because they're so far away, and that's why that's important. But if we were in a room full of 150 people, mm -hmm. it'd be a problem. And so it's a lagging indicator. So if the hospital is full, you got a, two more weeks of a wave coming, and, and you're out of room. So that, but that's the one that really tells the story. And so we're gonna we're gonna see. And I think the percentage of positive is also a good indicator. It doesn't matter how many tests you do; it's a percentage. We started, I think, in early March at, in high ones, 1 1.6, 1 1.7 positive inched up to two and I think we're at five now five percent of the tests given come back positive where in the beginning of this it was a much lower rate so I'm I mean there's there but people can manipulate anything into an argument I've learned that very well I have a family member and I they don't get the show and won't watch it on YouTube but um, and don't live in the area but I can't there is nothing I can say to that man that he won't argue, yes, yes, argue the opposing view. Um, because unless I can see it, touch it, and prove it with my own eyes, he doesn't believe it. <laughs> and so, and there's nothing you're going to say to him that will convince him otherwise. But I love him anyway. I just want you to know that. But um, so, so, yeah, I guess it is going to be an ongoing issue. But please don't let, your, don't let anybody take away your power. You make your own decision. Well, these things are tough and uh, kind of looping back and tying into that deep theme that you touched on with, with science and all these things. Science isn't perfect. It's not like you get the absolute truth in the beginning. You go through a series of revisions. <laughs> that's, that's the process. That's true, too. Uh, there is um, truth to the fact that the, the truth evolves. <laughs> it, well, you know, once upon a time, uh, we thought that the Earth was the center of the universe. Once upon a time, we thought the Earth was flat. I mean, those were the prevailing ideologies of the time. And if you said something different, you might be uh, branded a heretic. And, you know, so. No, I totally get it. But we, we too shall get through this. Um, well, we, we will. But absolutely. we need to do it together. You know, this is not an individual battle. This is a battle of, for all of us. Well, everyone should want to be healthy. And everyone should want to be prosperous. Everyone should want society to be open. Yes. And so let's yes. do the little things rather than being uh, subjected again to drastic, as you perfectly stated, restrictions. Yeah. We need to just err on the side of caution so that we can all go back to work and, and have a quality of life that includes operating on somewhat of a, a you know, normal level or a level before COVID. So that's what we're asking for. I'm not asking for you to change your belief system. I'm just asking you to please operate in a safe manner that will allow us to continue forward. I have not been, I've been so sidetracked by our conversation that I haven't been monitoring um, Facebook questions. Oh, I thought Sarah was doing it. I, I like it when Avi puts them on the screen for me. I don't know where Avi went. I've got them on my little phone here, which means I need questions. If you don't mind, just because I only have my little phone and um, and I'm probably yeah. about a hundred and some comments behind, to be honest with you. And while while Sarah goes to the mic, I just want to touch on those masks and the okay. chamber and the programs. So if you've been following uh, various newspapers or TV news stories, maybe you've been reading about some of the programs that cities and counties have made available. Uh, for residents and businesses in response to COVID. Here in the city, we had an emergency housing assistance program. Mm -hmm. But a lot of places have business assistance programs also. Yeah. And they're like, wow, why don't we have that in Port St. Lucie or St. Lucie County? Do you not love us? Do you not care? Mm. And of course we love yes. you and care about you. The problem is the CARES Act that, that uh, Congress uh, you know, passed and that the president signed into law specifically allocated money to communities 500,000 and larger. And St. Lucie County is about 300 and change. So people are like, Greg, why are they doing this in Palm Beach or Brevard County? Because they received $243 million. Yes. And the city of Port St. Lucie received some community development block grants in the amount of 600,000, which we use for emergency housing. But we were lobbying the governor to pass through some of the money the state got for smaller communities and that has started to happen now. 
Right. The, go the, uh, the governor and the state are going to pass through $1.2 billion to the smaller communities. But we don't know exactly how it's going to be distributed through the county. So we learned that the state's going to do it, but it's going to the counties. Mm -hmm. And will St. Lucie County distribute it to the city? Will they make programs available to all county residents, including the city? That remains to be determined. So keep your eyes peeled on that. But, you know, we continue to work on things that we can control, like application fees, process, and, you know, random acts of kindness yes. where the U.S. Conference of Mayors and Bella Canvas stepped up. My first thought was, was you and, and small business and, and the businesses of St. Lucie County. I appreciate that very much. And we will make sure that they, they get to the right people that need them. Um, we too looked into doing some microloans and we just didn't have enough money to be effective in any real manner. And, um, so we, we pivoted and put that money into being able to provide supplies, um, and, and t we're not going to get grants. Grants go to governmental issues or, uh, jurisdictions like the county and the city. And I know that you guys haven't gotten those yet because I knew about the 500,000 or larger. So I'm... I'm pretty sure, I feel confident that the county will make the right decision to distribute that amongst the entire county. Well, if you, if you feel like, uh, you know, sharing your opinion. With I will. I absolutely will. I will. Um, but I feel confident that we can make sure that that happens. Um, so, so I'm not too terribly worried about that. But there always is a limited amount of funds. And if I have $20,000 how many businesses can I actually save? But if with $20,000, I can make sure the majority of those businesses have access to masks and sanitizer. So that's the decision. I think it's a great analysis. Yes. You know, we decided to go that way instead of doing um, the microloans. It's just, I can't help enough people and I want to help as many people as I can. I've definitely seen the, the darker, darker side. The U S chamber of commerce had a grant program. Yes. That I merely tried to make people aware of. It was and gone then, before you made them aware. <laughs> well, I, I, I was fortunate enough to get on the front side so people can make application. But, you know, if the, of course, the traffic crashed the website. Of course. And they ran out of money like that. Mm -hmm. And not all of our zip codes were eligible because they had to have sorting criteria. They yeah. knew going in that, hey, we only have so much money. There's this astronomical need. We have to focus it. And people were like blaming me on their, <laughs> for their criteria. I'm like, hey, I guess shooting the messenger is really true. It is true. And we've learned that before. The chamber has learned that before in other crises when we have set up, um, we've set up virtual or not virtual, but we've set up like business centers where we would come in and have you help. But what they want is they want you to help them get into some of these programs that uh, that will funnel money to their business. And if you don't do that, we find that they're they they are not opposed to shooting the messenger. No, but uh, in, and it's funny because I actually included a scholarly journal on that, and it is true that we do shoot the messenger. It's been proven if you believe in science, but. Uh, <laughs> You know, that's why we have to have thick skin because, you know, as I told the people yeah. who were communicating their uh, discontent with me is, hey, we got to help as many people as possible. That's you how know, we should it. we ignore the opportunity because it doesn't help everyone or should we, especially in an emergency moment, triage and, and help as many people as possible, starting with the zip codes that have, you know, a lower income. Yeah. So that, that's the way we got to do it. But are, are you ready with our... Our questions, take oh, a break. We take a break. Okay. We okay. are going to uh, take a short break and uh, hopefully we'll have some questions when they come back. We, The two people that came down may have questions. That yeah, they, we got to go to them first. Yeah, pose. So we'll be right back, everybody, and I'll try to catch up with some comments online because I was very vocal today. I'm wondering how that looks for me. So we'll see. Maybe that's we'll, why we have to take a break. I don't know. I don't know. We'll uh, be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Introduce yourself to, to us and the, and the people of Port St. Lucie. Good morning, Mr. Mayor and uh, Mrs. Aronson. Yes. Pleasure to meet you. My name is Melvin Quinones. I moved into the city of Port St. Lucie six weeks ago from Broward County. And uh, one of the things that attracted me to move here is uh, I see the growth and it's evident that uh, what you're doing, Mr. Mayor, is working. Uh, I believe in the vision and, uh, and what I'm seeing. So that's well, what attracted to me you. to move here. Um, and... Uh, I am starting a new business, right? I started like three years ago. I'm a developer of musical instruments. Oh. Uh, and uh, they will have, uh, 
a lot of, it, it is something very common that you see the name of the city uh, in the instruments. So you will be seeing uh, musical instruments with the name uh, Port St. Lucie. Um, now I am questioned in terms of uh, I got a question for you first. I did sure. too, but I thought so, I'd finish. <laughs> yeah, the, the manufacturing of these instruments, are you like you're making uh, tubas or you're making your own kind of instruments, the so, Quinone instrument? Yeah, so uh, I've been a musician for 35 years. Um, that explains I am the Because beard. I actually look 30, right? But uh, no, I'm just kidding. But um, uh, I have been in this industry for a long time and uh, I've been a professional saxophone player, played in an army band and, and, and several uh, venues. Alto or baritone? What do we do? Alto, tenor, soprano. Uh, oh, you do it all. I yeah. do it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but I also have a career in uh, IT and engineering, mm -hmm. um, which, I, which had been very useful for me in starting this business and developing the business. Um, I do all the engineering and design, and I have uh, three different factories in Taiwan that, that do the manufacturing uh, for me. And uh, we're starting to work now. I just moved and just met the, the manager of the guitar center locally. Mm -hmm. but we want to see how we can work together with them and... Uh, and put instruments, you know, I think that art has been very uh, key, especially in this pandemic. You know, uh, emotionally, a lot of people are in distress, you know, and, and music and art is definitely a big component of what's going on, you know. I sure. think that uh, is, a, is a great way of helping. Um, so I'm definitely looking to work with the community in that, you know, in that aspect. You know, it's not only about business, it's about how we can participate in improving the community, right? Well, uh, when you get a chance to uh, reach out to us at the chamber, we'll help you with that. We'll give you some ideas. Thank you. You have a question? Yes, yes, absolutely. So now that I introduced myself, you know, I was wondering then uh, in terms of, uh, of your vision of there's a lot of businesses that may not be recoverable, right? So you just said there you can't save every business, right? Um, and a lot of entrepreneurs are very passionate about their business and they believe in it. But the truth is that not you're not going to be able to save every business. And some business is probably even better considering some new ideas. You know, this is a great opportunity to reinvent ourselves, right? Now, how much have has the city and the Chamber of Commerce, you know, um, considered uh, in, in terms of education to these small businesses? Some of them were not able to get a EIDA, EIDL loan yeah, yeah. Um, or any grants or loans. Uh, so how much are you providing in terms of education um, aside from loans as well or, or grants, you know, so, sure. so they can take up opportunities about it, you know? There's um, several answers to that. And we have lots of organizations, organizations providing education. And um, we as a chamber are going to partner with them so that there's one message and there's uh, you know, we don't want to duplicate efforts. That's not going to help anybody. So there is a virtual business center right now operating um, SBDC, IRSC, EDC, lots of partners in that. And so we want to help promote that. They're, they'll help educate on anything from finances to business plans to recovery plans. All of that can be uh, serviced through them. So that's definitely going on. We are doing a webinar Wednesday, a partnership with Florida Power and Light, and we are tackling different subjects. It changes depending on what's going on. At the beginning, we did a lot of uh, webinars on how to get your EIDL, your PPP, your payroll liability credits. We're now moving into some other stuff. We're going to circle back to that when it starts to become time to pay, where you have to start figuring out how much of that you're going to have to pay back, if you have to pay back your PPP, you know, what that means for your taxes and your business. So we, we'll continue that. There's lots of organizations continuing that. Some of my favorites are the accountants that are doing webinars, and we promote all of that as well. Back to your question on the fact that we do know some businesses are not going to be able to sustain during this. That's just unfortunate, but the reality. And we are aware of that, and it hurts, but we know that we will rebound, and those businesses will continue on in some sort of iteration down the road. And we do have a program that we're doing with the city of Port St. Lucie. And I've um, talked to the mayor about this. And of course, the city manager, it is a program that helps with actually occupying space as a as a commercial retail um, organization. It helps with the build out, identifying the right space for a business, identifying the right land, 
any expansion plans, all of that stuff, we can help you through the regulatory process because that's usually the process local businesses are not aware of, small businesses in particular. So if you're um, if you are a part of a hair salon that doesn't make through this and eight months from now you want to open a hair salon, I want you to come and see me first because we're going to help you identify the right space for that hair salon and we're going to help you get through that process quickly and um, hopefully with less cost. And that's through a grant that we have with the city of Port St. Lucie, we expect to be doing tons of that eight months from now, because all that space that's being occupied by people that aren't going to be able to sustain is going to get turned over. And we want to make sure that we're there to help them. So that's a little bit of what the chamber is doing and what some of our partners are doing. And we're thankful for all of our partners. And now I will toss it to the mayor if you want to add anything in on that. I mean, I covered a lot, but yeah. Oh, I do. And of course, it's always important to explain the alphabet soup. You mentioned a number of things, but let's start with IRSC, which is Indian River State College. Uh, it's one of the best state colleges in the land and in a state that has uh, the best university system in the country. So we're very lucky to have Indian River State College, IRSC, and they have a school uh, for entrepreneurialism. And we just recently entered into a strategic contract with mm -hmm. IRSC to provide a full-time consultant to help with uh, help entrepreneurs start their business. So that is a resource that's being made available. And as an outgrowth of that discussion, uh, we talked about creating a roadmap so that regardless of where you were on your journey of being an entrepreneur, of creating a business, that we would be able to direct you to the right program. So there is an organization of retired CEOs through a program called SCORE that can help people who have never done a business plan before, or they're just talking about their concept. And then as you start to graduate, you have the Small Business Development Center at IRSC, who we're contracting with, that can help you. And then if you're already an established company and you're looking to take it to the next level, that's probably when we would tie you in to our strategic partnership with the chamber. And then also, the, she mentioned the EDC, which is the Economic Development Council. So you would be uh, perhaps familiar with all these institutions being in Broward. I bought my first house in Pembroke Pines and graduated from UM. So like in Miami, if you hear the Beacon Council, you know that's their EDC. And so we have those, those same type of institutions here. Just, of course, we're not as populous as, as Miami Dade or Broward, but we we, we pretty much have our own versions of them. But so we're, those resources are there. And then just to give you somewhere to go immediately, the city has a business navigator. His name's Elijah Wooten. His number is 873-6374. All right, again, that's 873-6374. So if you're a small business owner and you're looking to access the system or be pointed in the right direction, that's a great contact. Uh, that's the guy that's kind of entrusted and, and empowered to, to help. Uh, but we help at all levels. The building department has a number of uh, educational seminars. I don't know if we've gone online in, in the face of COVID, uh, but we're, we are trying to inform and, and educate. We recently had a small business program this last year where we took people through an education process and a return for completing the course, you got a micro loan. So we're working on, on all these levels. But, but what I really liked about our last conversation, in addition to strengthening the partnership with IRSC, which again is a just, you know, it's been recognized, uh, it's Aspen award winning, it's been recognized as, as one of the best values in education in the country, is this idea that we're gonna create the roadmap. Just so it's, it's easy for people to understand, here's where I'm at, this is where I need to go, this is how I could do it. Uh, because uh, to your point, opening and then maintaining a small business is difficult. Not everyone's gonna make it. That's, that's the sad reality of it. So we wanna position the people of Port St. Lucie to have the best chance possible. And I think you're right about what's gonna happen in response to the current business closures, people are going to get out of this lease, but then they're going to try again because they don't have any other choice. They're going to have to try again. And we certainly saw that in the face of the Great Recession, which was really a depression here locally. You had a lot of people starting up businesses 
and we reached an all-time high for the number of businesses in the city. It actually went down a little bit, even though we've been enjoying this economic expansion because a lot of those small business owners, when they had the opportunity, they went back to work, got benefits, and decided that, hey, I'll go do this rather than running my own shop. But we're, I think we're gonna be in that period again where people are gonna try to start from scratch. We're gonna be here to help them. So again, Elijah Wooten, 873-6374. But no, we are on that wavelength and we're creating a program so that in PSL, if you wanna start a new business, we'll actually connect you to a professional who can help you and put you on the right path to give you a better chance at success. And I think that if we find that the program is oversubscribed and there's just so much interest, I think that I think there's a willingness uh, among the whole council. And you know, you were very complimentary, Senor Quinones, so I really appreciate that. So thank you for your positivity and bringing that here to PSL. That's what we love and we're so happy to have you. I'm just one of five, you know, up here. We have a great team. We have 1,100 employees working hard and I moved up from Pembroke Pines in 2002, February 2002 is when I bought my house in PSL. I moved from Sunswept in Pembroke Pines over off the University in Taft, Johnson area over there, 8591 Northwest 14th Street. Uh, so moved up here and, and just have loved every day since. And uh, I, think, I think you're, I think you're gonna, gonna love it too. Yep. So far, so far, I'm loving it. So yeah, I did move from Pembroke Pines as well, all the way west. And uh, were you west of 75 or west of 75 by Sheridan and 184th? Yes. Oh yeah. I had a friend in Pembroke. Thank you very Pines. much for. for Thank the you for being the sole participant in our audience today as well. We appreciate you being here. And, but I think what has set the city apart in this most recent period. Of course, it was great when we had the economic expansion because it's always easier mm -hmm. when the economy is good and people are feeling more prosperous, they're in a better mood, they're not as worried, they don't have to worry about feeding their family, so it's a different dynamic. But this city's approach as a team to strategic planning, and if you ever get a chance, check out cityofpsl.com slash strategic plan uh, because we go through a citizen-driven process. We do a scientifically valid annual survey we hold an annual citizen summit, and we use that to inform our decision making. Because as you know, in a city of 200,000, uh, people want different things, they have different priorities, and you only have so much money, even in the best of times. It's really important to focus. And our focus is, of course, to be a, a safe, beautiful, and prosperous city for all people. So big picture. And then on an annual basis, we update what our priorities are to you know, move us a step further to to reaching our, our promise there, our, our full potential. So we want you to be a part of it. And there's also a city university, award-winning city university program. You can probably be pretty busy in a new place with a new business and, and all that good stuff. But if you ever get a chance and you just want to see how the city works and you want to learn more, yes, it's a great program. And the chamber does leadership, St. Lucie. And uh, I did that as, as, new, as being new to the community. In a, in a public role, and I just loved it. Just loved it. Can't recommend it enough. I go through it every year. I still love it. Yeah, yeah I, I facilitate that. Um, a couple other questions. I'm not one of five. I, that often gets confused in the comments. Oh, yes, yes. She is She is uh, not an elected official. Thank in you In the city for that. of Port St. Lucie. I don't know if she's elected somewhere else, but. I don't think so. And um, point of note, I don't hate meetings. I just have a lot of them. Oh, she was sitting on that for a while. Huh? I did. I had to sit on that for like 20 minutes, but it was All still right. coming I back up. I have point, 23. Even you pretty much told me that. Okay. okay. I have 23 standing meetings a month, and I have not had those since this pandemic. 23, like every month I know on this Tuesday I'm going to be here. Um, through this pandemic, I am very productive when not going to 23 meetings a month. So I'm going to probably look at those even closer <laughs> at the end of this and see what I've decided. So I don't hate meetings. Um, Sarah, do we have any questions that we probably should address online? Um, yeah, we've got quite a few. Um, and unfortunately, uh, 
the way my feed is working, as new ones are coming in, the really old ones have disappeared. So we'll have to go back and answer some online. And that's what I was going to say. Maybe we do the, the most um, probably necessary for a broad audience here and then answer some of the other ones online, the specific ones maybe yeah. online. So here's a good one. Um, okay. Dustin is asking, um, any updates on Southern Grove? And where do you see this headed 10 years from now? And then he had a follow-up question with, what um, are the plans for extending Becker to range line? Okay, so mm -hmm. Becker is slated to be scheduled to range line as are several other east-west roads. The difficulty for any of us, or the challenge, or the, <laughs> I guess the disappointment for any of us that want to see it happen immediately so it's easier for us to get to McCarty, our McCarty Ranch property, is that those roads are going to be built with uh, and by the developers as the development extends further west. And it's only natural for them to tap into the existing infrastructure and work from east to west. So it's going to go with the pace of development. That's how we're going to see the, the road be connected. So unfortunately, it's not going to be tomorrow. And we're going to have to see how COVID, which you know, has started as a, as a health crisis, what it means for real estate and our development cycles over time. But you're gonna have several connections made, including Crosstown, Becker, and a couple of roads in between. So that, that will happen. Southern Grove, the sky's the limit for Southern Grove. Uh, so even in these difficult times, we've had a couple more just really exciting announcements and it, it shows the strength of the area. So Southern Grove, for everyone at home or, or listening or who will listen, you know, it's that area to the south of Tradition Parkway. Uh, extending down to Becker. And so you have four running miles there along I-95. And the city of PSL actually owns the 1,200 acres plus minus uh, of land between Village and 95 and Tradition and Becker. And that's what we also call our jobs corridor. We're in the process of master planning that area. We hired the Treasure Coast Regional Planning Council to work with the public and our stakeholders to come up with the right master plan and uh, the results of that will be uh, forthcoming in the next couple of months. But I think it's the interesting dynamic that I can see behind the scenes is originally we wanted 1,200 acres is big. And it's, scale is one of those issues that can be very difficult for people to appreciate. But by way of comparison, downtown West Palm with everything thrown in is about 750 acres more or less in, in that neighborhood. I want to say Stewart's only like 175, 190 acres, mm -hmm. something like that, downtown Stewart. So 1,220 is a big area. Uh, so originally we were talking about, well, where could the, the, the manufacturing and logistic use, logistics uses be? Where could the town center type development, uh, the lifestyle center that everyone wants, where could that be? Where are the entertainment uses, the restaurant uses? And... I, I think it's interesting that some of the planners identified, hey, make this whole area, all of it jobs, all the way from Cleveland Clinic on the north to Becker to the south, and push the town center up to all of that green area and the space that's not being fully utilized at the landings uh, and, and where Target is. And it's from a planning perspective, it's a pretty, it's a pretty valid idea and uh, people might remember that I started as a planner in South Miami back in 1996. But uh, it definitely has merit. The only issue is we got to get Kite off of the, the, uh, and the, the property owner to, to start moving and, and uh, to make it happen. Because they, for me, that manager and, and those property owners haven't been as aggressive as I'd like to see with that property. So it would take them either selling or, or taking on a new posture and uh, executing a little bit differently. But it's a very exciting time and it's, it's really the future and it's the center of gravity for not just the city, but all of St. Lucie County and the Treasure Coast. And just think about the assets that are already in place and some of the announcements that we've made. So you have Cleveland Clinic, one of the two best names in healthcare on the, the north end there. And then Torrey Pines is now owned by the Florida International University, and they want to do 20 to 30 percent of their university's total research out of that facility. What used to be VGTI is now 
the Florida Research and Innovation Center, mm -hmm. which of course has the acronym FRIC. So I just have to say that it's fricking awesome because you have Cleveland Clinic, the Lerner Institute, the vaccine group out of Australia, and a silver lining to COVID is that during this pandemic, they announced their Emerging Pathogens Institute. So you're gonna be having major research, including uh, on things like COVID happening right there in, in Port St. Lucie. Uh, you, of course, you have Kaiser University, you have the 411,000 square foot TAMCO building that is uh, now open and lights up the, the night sky there. Thank you for uh, TAMCO and City Electric. And you may have heard that Excel, fire manufacturer, is moving down from Connecticut. Yep. Oculus Surgical is building a headquarters. And we recently put 300 acres more or less of land on uh, the south end of Becker under contract with the Sandstone Group. And they want to bring uh, 2,500 to 3,500 jobs uh, through their development uh, over the next five years, five to 10 years. It is exciting. A lot of these were in the pipeline already, and so I'm, I'm happy about that because they are going to come to fruition. Um, and I'm hoping we don't really miss a step with getting some of these big manufacturers specifically here when we're on the backside of this. I think it's important. Well, I mean, the fact that we were able to move two deals forward during this pandemic, I mean, it's, uh, you know, I just knock on wood because it's, it's, really, it's really such good news. And who, who wouldn't want it? But Southern Grove, definitely uh, stay involved. And when you look at PSL, we've, we've been a great bedroom community for a long time. Mm -hmm. We are the safest large city in Florida. You know, you get the Florida lifestyle at best value. It's hard to beat the, the pricing. And you have access to bigger markets, but you don't have the traffic and the litter and the crime. You know, so you get the best of both worlds. What we've been missing are the jobs. Mm -hmm. And we're working on that. And that's where it's going to happen, the, the aptly named Jobs Corridor. <laughs> All right, Sarah, do, is there anything else we should address? I, I think it's 10 o'clock. Is, is the clock right in here? That clock is, yes, it's not. We're long-winded today. Four. Um, there are quite a few questions. Um, I, I'll just another general one that we you could, could. We could let Trista go, and I could just do all the mayoral questions. Are they all mayoral? I mean, a lot of them are specific to the city. They usually are, and and I'm not um, I'm not authorized to answer <laughs> those, nor do I want to. <laughs> um, but I'll, I'll run down the list. Just let's knock it out. Okay. Um, um, it's, uh, Nancy is asking about public transportation and she's asking if we have an update on public transportation. She doesn't like to drive everywhere and she'd like to see, it sounds like she's looking for more information on what's new with public transportation. Well, that's good question and very timely. Do you yeah. want to answer that one? No, I mean, we have a new partner that we're, we're moving into. The county's moving into a new partnership with MB, which is sort of a national transit provider, which I think will open up a lot of routes for us. Is that and who they selected? Yes, it is who they selected. So they went away from the Council on Aging? Well, the Council on Aging will still be providing services for the elderly and um, still providing some call services, you know, where they'll come out. Oh, yeah. yeah, on demand. So, yes, they selected MB and um, very excited about that. And I love my partners at the Council on Aging, but to have a national transportation deal in place, it really is going to open up a lot for us. So, so I'm excited to see how that pans out. That's always been an issue for us is public transportation. So let's, let's hit the big picture. So with public transit, it's a county service, not a direct city service. Mm -hmm. So the city doesn't, uh, is not the direct provider. We lobby the, the, the county commission and the, the county provider, and they've been a good partner. So they have been increasing services in the city of Port St. Lucie. And the city has adopted a kind of str strategic transit-oriented priorities. So there's actually a list that we can provide you if you want to email Sarah or me at mayor at cityofpsl.com. And a big thing we're trying to get the county to do is decrease the headway because it used to be that you know, routes only ran on an hour and that's not convenient, especially if mm -hmm. you miss the bus. So one of the first order, orders of business is to get it to a half hour uh, routes every every half hour. Another thing <clears> the <throat> county has, has <clears throat> done for the people of Port St. Lucie is to create an on-demand pilot 
for Southwest PSL out there uh, in the Gatlin area, and it goes out tradition. And then for people with a long commute to maybe a job center down south, uh, whether it be Palm Beach or Broward County, uh, we're doing a, a Jobs Express terminal right under the power lines on Gatlin out there by the Home Depot, you know, just a, a little bit to the, to the east of the Home Depot under those major transmission lines. And there will actually be six electric vehicle chargers there. Uh, so th that's something that's, we just approved the deal with FPL uh, this week. So those are some of the things going on. Uh, so you're gonna continue to see this service improve over time, but I think you will see the county wisely base it on utilization. What is actually being utilized and how can we spend these dollars efficiently as possible? Does it make sense to have more bus routes? Should we do more on demand? Uh, should we do more partnerships with the Ubers and, and Links of the world? Mm -hmm. And remember that your city of PSL is a relatively young city. We we're incorporated in 61. We're a suburban city. We're spread out. We're geographically large at over 120 square miles. So the fixed systems that we're familiar with in, in more populous areas, more densely populate, populated areas, don't necessarily work here on a cost-effective basis. Uh, but there, there are some neat things going on. And I don't know where Nancy lives in the city, but in tradition, uh, we're also working on an autonomous vehicle with the developer of Mattamy Homes. Mm -hmm. And we just recently submitted for a federal grant that would bring an autonomous vehicle onto the trail system that is uh, being constructed in tradition. And uh, you, you said you had some people, uh, Sarah from Valencia K. Of course, that's a, a gorgeous GL community. And one of their amenities is the Paseo, which is a multi-purpose trail that actually has separated paths for walkers and golf cart riders and bicyclists at speed. And it's just gorgeous, it's amazing. And a version of that is being extended through the whole district. So whether you live in Valencia K with GL or you live in the Mattamy side, they have Tradition Trail. And on a portion of that Tradition Trail, the trail is wide enough and will accommodate the autonomous vehicle. So you're off of the road and it's kind of like a monorail without the billions of dollars of infrastructure putting it in the air. So it's, it's really exciting. All right, I'm getting some instructions from, from inside the house. The call is coming from inside the house. So I have to, I've been instructed to close out coffee with the mayor and then we'll continue on with you being able to address the questions on a mayoral level. Um, I did wanna mention on behalf of the chamber that we are continuing our partnership with Children's Services Council in the Small Business Big Challenge. And every Friday we designate one of our chamber member businesses, restaurants, for you to pick up your meals, whether it be lunch, dinner, whatever, and then in turn, Children's Services donates up to $1,000 in receipts to a nonprofit that they serve. This week, it is Lakeview Bar and Grill, which um, I'm sure you're familiar with Creative Catering. They operate out of there. It's their restaurant, and it's in St. Lucie West, across from the Bank of America, in the... In the um, St. Lucie Trail, I think they call that area now. So pick up your dinner there. Oh, and St. Lucie Trail is your partner? The, yeah, the, who's yeah, our yeah. family? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I yeah. love them. Karen and Andrew, and yes, yeah, we love them too. We um, So their business, they own Lakeview Bar and Grill. <clears throat> Sorry, my sinuses are really bothering me today. It's not COVID. I always feel like I have to say that every time I clear well, my throat. Well, how can we be sure? You should go you to can't. one of the new testing That's why I'm facilities. wearing a mask. Walmart <laughs> neighborhood, uh, neighborhood markets, both of them in PSL are now offering testing on site. They are. Most of them are any, a couple of them are no symptoms. You don't have to qualify for, in other words. And, the, and so that's important as well, because previously you had to qualify to get a test and you don't have to do that anymore. The other thing I need to mention is our annual fishing frenzy. Um, this is, you know, we've been doing this for decades and it's a huge event. People come from all over South Florida to participate. And we have found a way that minimize any interaction with other people. Um, 
Um, and we're going to continue on to do this. This is, it's not only our, one of our ledger fundraisers. Remember the chamber's a nonprofit. We're private sector nonprofit. It's one of our largest fundraisers. But it brings in a lot to local bait shops, gas, dockage, all that kind of stuff. And we, the SKA had to postpone their tournament, which we were expecting this year. So we want to step up, do our part and provide our fishing frenzy. But I'm telling you, we're going to have very little interaction with people. You're going to weigh your own fish. You're going to pick up your placard through drive through Oh, wow. That seems like a recipe for some embellishment. Well, I'm there to verify the weight. I'm just not, oh, okay. you know, I will I will look at the scale and verify the weight in the fish, but I am not going to get up there on the stage with you as I typically do. We also did our golf tournament, and it was um, very interesting. I had a lot of other people that are planning on doing golf tournaments come to figure out how we were doing ours so they could figure out how to do theirs, but I, I'm fine with that. I love that. But it was basically we'll text you what hole you are on, you pick up the first cart in the line, and you head out because everybody had to go individually. So you didn't have to wait for a cart partner. So, um, and that was more than 14 days ago. So I'm very happy to report that I think we did that very safely. So all of this stuff is online, stlucychamber.org, including you can purchase um, these masks we're going to give away for free, but you can purchase masks and sanitizer at stlucychamber.org. Sign up for the fishing frenzy. We appreciate that. Um, thank you to our sponsor, Mid Florida Credit Union, and our sole participant here in, in City Hall today. And all of your staff as well. They do such a great job. So thank you to everybody. Hopefully soon, um, it, within 2021, we'll be back with a full audience and coffee and pastry and everything is my hope. I miss my coffee cake. I really do. And with that, take have a great day, everybody. Have a great weekend. And hopefully we'll see you soon. But I think we will continue on with you answering questions yes, to I'll the definitely. Facebook yeah. feed. And I will sign off. So thank you for having me. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks, Tripp.